Yo, 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 you know what it is. You know where you is. You know what time it is. Yes, it is that time once again for the I Am The Possible podcast experience. The bonus track. Yes. And this still is the place where possibilities become perspective. Perspective. Guys, thank you so much for rocking with me once again in the place to be. So many amazing things to see. And I am so jazzed up because I got some dope information to share with you today. Guys, before I get into any of that, let me pause for the cause. You, you're the reason you're the cause. Thank you so, so much for being who you are, for showing up each and every week. For, 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 for every download, for every comment, for every email, for every question. Thank you. Thank you for being who you are. Thank you for being what you are. Thank you for doing what you you do um, in and through this world. Hey, let me fix this cord. Hey, let me twist this because this is in the way. There we go. All right. Now we're ready. <laughs> All right, a little technical, little technical issue there. Those that are watching on the tube just saw me fix a little uh, wire issue that we had. And if you are not watching on the tube, why are you not watching on the tube? You should be watching on the tube. I have nothing against the podcast platforms out there. Nothing against it. But I am looking to grow and to expand band my youtube channel so if you are not watching me on the tube please go over to youtube type in i am the possible don't forget the the i am the possible go to my page subscribe hit that bell make sure that you are in the know each and every time i drop new content and i am dropping new content on the regular all right guys let's jump into today's episode today's experience ready this one is called the reason you're not happy at work. Now, work is something that we all do, something that we all feel that we got to do. Right. We got to pay bills. We got to we got to, you know, earn our, our wages and earn our way and all of that good stuff. But today I want to focus on the idea that most of us feel like we got to do the work that we're doing rather than the perspective of. I get to do the work that I'm doing. That's a whole nother game. Some of us go to work each and every day. We punch the clock eight hours a day, 30 minutes for lunch. Some of us an hour for lunch. And it's the same old rat race. It's the same old groundhog day, day in and day out. We just show up. We do what we got to do. And we get up out of there because we don't really find, as I like to say, enjoyment in our employment. And that's one of my missions to help you to find and to develop that enjoyment in your employment because there are so many of us out there and you may be like that and I can certainly testify and give you a story which I'm about to do in just a moment of you know many many years of not enjoying my employment and not liking what I was doing um, not because I was a bad person not because you're a bad person it's just and I'm going to get into that in just a moment. There are some things that we need to learn about ourselves and about our work life that's going to help us to develop this enjoyment. And it may be found in the work that you're doing now or it may be waiting on you in another position or another role. But let me share my story, my corporate America story. And, I, and I'm still in corporate America right now. So it's still real time. And, 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 and so it's still fresh. It's still right. It's, it's, it, 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 it's something that's still working on me and working in me. So I can really speak to this with a great deal of detail and passion. Um, but actually, before I share the story, I don't know if you guys know this, but 90,000 hours on average, 90, thousand hours is a person's normal work life one third of your life is spent on the job and i think that that needs to be said i think that that needs to be understood like we need to be aware of that like a third of our lives we're spent working and so because it's such a huge part of our life because it's such a huge part of the energy that we that we give out into the world, right? Earning a living, earning our, our money, earning a paycheck, right? However you do it, 
entrepreneur, if you're, you know, someone that, uh, that works for someone else, whatever, whatever context it is, 90,000 hours, you're investing, you're investing, you're investing all of yourself, your energy, your thoughts, your emotions, everything. That's a huge part of your life. And so I think that because we're making such a great investment, then it should be something that we enjoy doing. It, it just, to me, it just makes sense that it would be something that we actually like to do. And so many of us, there's been some statistics shown that over 50% of Americans uh, in a recent survey, over 50%, over 50%, more than half, say that they are dissatisfied with their jobs. They, they don't like going to work. And that's a problem. That's a huge problem. And I think that what I'm going to share today is one of the major reasons, one of the major reasons. There's there's several that I go over and I've done videos and I've done episodes on. Um, but today I want to, you know, really hammer down on this particular one that I think is is one of the major ones in terms of just how you show up to work and the value that you are not only able to bring, but that you are able to experience yourself bringing. It's one thing to add value. It's another thing to know that you're adding value and to feel satisfied in the work that you are, are doing. So my corporate America story started in uh, 2006 and I was hired on a two year contract for a large healthcare uh, corporation conglomerate. And I started off two year contract, very eager, very passionate about anything that could pay my bills, that could feed my family. And I went from this two year contract with having no healthcare background, no experience, no education. I just had the attitude, show me what I need to do. I'm really sharp. Just show me what I need to do and I can execute. I can do it. And so I took that approach. So I went from a two year contract to another two year contract. And then there was this space where it was like, we're just doing multiple projects, but I'm just doing what I need to do to just earn the paycheck. I, ne I wasn't necessarily passionate about it. I didn't necessarily love it, but I was loving providing for my family. So it made sense for me to stay. It made sense for me to continue to do what I was doing. And then it came a point in time when it was time to, you know, transition from the contracts and to move into some sort of full time position. And while I won't give all that backstory, it took me a little while, had some hurdles, had had some challenges. But I I began that's this is right around the time where I began to really hone in on my communication skills and I started to learn the value of communication and the value that I possessed in and through my ability to effectively communicate. And so I, I began to leverage that as my, as my major, as my contribution. Maybe I don't have these degrees that other people have. Maybe I don't have all these other skill sets, but I can communicate. I can communicate with my team. I can communicate with business partners. I can communicate with stakeholders and I do it really, really well. And I get good results through my communication. And so because communication is such a, a needed thing, I was able to leverage that to secure a full-time position. And so I've been in corporate America for over 18 years or over 17 years, 18 years this year. And so um, the reason that I share this story is that, not only was I able to take a, a two year contract and turn it into a six figure income without the education, without the background, without the, um, you know, experience in this particular field of work. It was, I was able to tap into what I want to talk about today. My genius at the time, I didn't know what it was called. I didn't know what it meant. I just felt something on the inside. I just had a realization. I just had a awareness of my ability to do a particular thing and how I moved throughout a given project team. I always found myself gravitating toward thinking a certain way and contributing a certain way. 
though I had a, you know, I had other responsibilities that had nothing to do with this one thing that I just continued to find myself doing. I had to do those things, but I found, and this is why I believe in this thing called the working genius. And that's what I want to talk about today. The reason I believe in the working genius so much is because I lived it and I experienced it before, before I knew what it was. Before Pastor Kerwin gave me the book that he picked up at the airport. And I want to go ahead and just show it right now. It's called The Six Types of Working Genius. If you don't have this book and you are in the working field, working class, if you are in the workforce, you need to get this book. This is a must read book. They're not paying me to advertise this. They're not they're, I don't have any affiliate links. I just believe in what they did. I just believe in the work that they're doing. And I believe in it because I lived it without knowing that I was living it, without having a name for it. And just a few years ago, I discovered it when I received this book. I said, oh, my God, that's what was the tipping point. That was the catalyst. That was what I found. Not knowing that I found it. I found my genius. Now, in this book, this book talks about six types of working genius. Because I didn't like necessarily the work that I was doing in corporate America. I didn't love it. But here's what I want to, to, to share with you. The reason that we're not happy at work is because for many of us, we haven't tapped into our genius. It doesn't make work perfect. It doesn't make it, um, you know, like if you have a calling on your life, a purpose, something, you know, that you really want to do that's outside of what you're currently doing. I totally get that because I'm the same way. Right. I see bigger. I see better. What I'm saying is, is that within the context of your working time, working for that other company, working for that corporation, there is an ability for you to tap into, to discover through this quick assessment, to discover what your working genius is. And for you to begin to not only hone in on what God's given you as a gift is something innate, intrinsic. It's there. It's already there. Many of you are feeling it because it's like a, a thing that's on the inside that's begging to get out, that's craving to get out. And you don't know what to call it. You, you, you don't have the language for it yet. You just know that every day when you punch out, that wasn't satisfying. Like, you know that you have something to contribute. You might not know what it is, but you know that there's something within you that desires to get out, that desires to be expressed. You know that you bring something to the table. You know that you could, you know, you could contribute to your team's projects or the work effort in general. You know that you could add more value to the company that you work for, but you don't know what to call it. And they, and I'll be getting into that in just a moment. They don't know what to call it. So because they're not acknowledging it and they're not providing tools and education around it and because you haven't discovered it either through reading this book or something online they don't know it and you don't know it so they can't help you nurture it and because you don't know it you can't cultivate it and present it and the only reason that I was able to take advantage of it and continue to elevate in corporate America and find a a space and place of, of, you know, satisfaction and, and meaning, uh, which has gotten me through these years is because I was reading and training something different. And along the way, I never knew what it was, but along the way, I just began to tap into it. And sometimes some of us were not doing a lot of self learning and self education and we're not doing that self-development outside of our jobs. And so because we're not active outside of our jobs to improve ourselves, what we can tend to do is just look at our job as this is my source of income and this is what I do. And when I'm done doing this, I'm just going to go home and hang out with the family, watch some television, eat dinner, go to sleep, wake up, do it again. So. I, in a sense, stumbled upon it because I was active outside of of my job. I'm not telling you that you have to be like me. You don't have to be a, 
um, a book nerd and you don't have to be a self-development nerd. You don't have to take all these courses and classes like I did. You do you, man. What, what I'm saying is, is that if you learn what your genius is, is going to provide you so much personal peace, professional peace. You're going to be able to align what you're doing with who you really are and vice versa. You're going to begin to be able to kind of carry yourself a different way. You're going to begin to, you know, learn how you can plug in and kind of speak up a little more because you're going to have a greater voice because you're going to be speaking from a place of value. That's another one. Some of us go to work and we don't know the value that we bring. We feel that we can contribute you know, more or better, but we don't really know what it is. And there's a different confidence that comes about when you know what your gift is, what your genius is, and you're able to articulate what that genius is. You're able to speak to that genius and you're able to show up in a room knowing what 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 you bring to the table and how you contribute to the environment. And you're able to tell somebody like, look, man, use me like this. Put me in this position. It's just like a sports team, right? You run out on a court, you run out on a field and they haven't given you your position yet or worse. They put you in a position that you're not built for. And that's what continues to happen in corporate America. That's what continues to happen on our nine to fives. We're in positions because they are not aware of your genius and you're not aware of your genius. So no one can speak to your genius because no one's aware of it. So they put you in the best place that they think is you know, that 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 best suits them or best suits the the need. Right. Sometimes it's not nothing against you. It's this is what we need somebody to do. And we're going to hire you to do that with no respect or knowledge of what your gift is or what your genius is. And that's it's not a bad thing. It's it's that's what they're paying for. And you need the money. So you plug in like most of us do. That's how I started. I had a wife, kids. I just need to pay some bills. But once you get the train rolling, once you get on track and you get some momentum, now you can afford to begin to learn more about yourself. This is why I say that the greatest form of self-development is self-discovery. This is why I say that the greatest form of self-development is self-discovery. When you know why God made you, how God made you, the gifts God gave you. Then you're able to grow in not only your awareness and your appreciation, but you get to grow in your attitude. You begin to you begin to have greater standards. You begin to walk with a different character, with a different level of integrity. You begin to, in a way, not pushy and not demanding, but you begin to, hey, this is a new standard of mine. I, I need to operate like this. When you begin to learn what your genius is. Now, I got my little notes over here. I just went all off the cuff. I told you I get passionate about it. I told you I get passionate about it. I hope and pray that you've been following what I've been sharing, because, again, I came in here with all these notes, man, and, and really wanted to teach on this thing. Um, I'll kind of pick up where I left off. But I hope that something I've said, even, you know, so far has has sparked something within you, because ultimately I'm looking for that person that's going to work and saying, this ain't enough. There's something missing. I know there's more. I know, I know I can contribute. I know I mean something. I know I've got something to offer. I know I can, I can help, but you, but you don't know the words. You, you, you don't know how to identify it and to articulate it, but you like everybody else were created as a contribution to the betterment of our society. And you can begin to contribute more. You can begin to be a greater contribution. You can become a greater you, right? We always talk about the best version of ourselves. Well, this is how you become the best version of yourself by learning, by learning yourself, by learning the genius that God gave you. So let me, let me, let me share something here. You know, one, one of the worst things in the world to do, or let me just say one of the worst um, or well, let me get my words together. There's nothing worse. There's nothing worse than trying to make a decision in life without having all of the needed information. 
I was, I was, I was just recently asked to uh, put together something for a project and I didn't have all the information. Okay. And I was helped. I was, I was, I was given the information that I needed, but initially I, I didn't have all the information there. There's no worse feeling than needing to make a decision than needing to pull the trigger on something and feel like you don't have all the information. And many times in life, we're choosing careers. Some of us are going to school, right? This is for my college students. Some of us are in college or heading off to college and we're going about choosing our major and our career based upon what mama and them said, what daddy and them said, what my uncles and them said, or the expectation of me based upon my culture. There's a lot of people who are a part of certain cultures and they say, okay, well, all of our family members are doctors. All of us are lawyers or all of us are this, or all of us are that. And it has nothing to do with your genius. It has nothing to do with who you are. So anyway, um, I just really wanted to, you know, also speak to that person who, who feels under pressure to follow a path, a career path. And inside, you know, this just doesn't align. This doesn't feel good. This doesn't feel like me. This isn't what I want to do in the world. I, I'd rather be doing something else. Right. Well, when you learn what your genius is and when you learn what, what your gifts are, you're, you're able to create a conviction that helps to fuel your boldness and your ability to push back a little bit and to say, no, I'm not going to set. I'm not going to, I'm not going to settle for everyone's pushing and prodding of me. This is my life and I'm going to choose the path that's going to be most productive and most positive for me. Okay. Um, the next thing that, that I wanted to share along these lines, let me put it into a corporate context. This is for anyone who's listening, who, um, may be an employer, someone who employs other people. Um, I want to get into the advantages and the disadvantages of the working genius. But before I do, let me just kind of give you, which I failed to do earlier on, to just kind of give you what the working genius is. The working genius is, it is the way that God has shaped you for the workforce. There's six types and each of us fall into two categories. There's two, you'll, you'll have a dominant one and then you'll have like a strong one. So two out of the six will apply to you once, once you take the assessment and this informs you on what you do best, the greatest value that you bring to your team or to the work environment. It's, it, it shows you how you're going to thrive. It shows you how you're going to do well. Like if you work according to your genius, if you put me in a position where I get to exercise my genius, I'm, I'm going to get, you're going to get, we're going to get, really great results, like really good results. Cause it's, it's, it's what I am. It's, it's how I flow, right? Like it's really flow state. It's like, yo man, let me do this. And I flow with it. I don't have to put forth no effort. I'm happier when I do it. Right. And that's why I'm, I'm so big on the enjoyment in employment because people tend to do more of what they enjoy. Right. Shout out to my business owners, shout out to my corporate, my corporate execs, people that, you know, have people under them. If your people actually enjoy what they do, they're going to do it more and they're going to do it better. That's just a side note. So let's, you know, let's not rob them of the enjoyment. Work should be enjoyable. It should be pleasant. It should be pleasing. Why? Because we do better at things that we actually enjoy doing. Right. We're going to call out less. We're going to get sick less. <laughs> right. Figuratively and literally. Right. Some of us stress ourselves out so much that we actually physically get sick because we're stressed out because we hate our work. But some of us just like to call off and use up them sick hours because we just don't want to be there. We're sick of the job. We are sick. We're sick of, of going to this doggone job. Right. But either way. 
it's going to save so much money for the employer. Less sick time, less call outs, less, you know, especially in this re remote world, people are going to be more engaged, right, in the work that they're doing. And not kind of like half-assing it because they actually enjoy what they're doing because they get to exercise their genius and their gifts. And so when we look at the advantages and the disadvantages, they're the same. My three E's, engagement, effectiveness, and efficiency. If you, the individual employee, if you want to up your game of engagement, effectiveness, and efficiency, when you work within your genius, you're going to knock these three out the ballpark. Boom, home run every time. If you're the employer and you can tap into integrating the working genius into your hiring process or team building uh, exercises or, you know, how we do surveys every year or required, uh, you know, learning every year. This should be a part of that. You put this into your program. People learn what they are and then you work with their managers to help put them in a position that allows them to flow within their genius. You're going to elevate the engagement, the effectiveness and the efficiency of your employees. Because when you get them in their genius, when you put them in the realm of their genius, the scope of their genius, you let them play in the sandbox of their genius, they're going to show up differently. And when that engagement and effectiveness and efficiency begins to elevate, they're going to take greater pride in their work. They're going to feel better about themselves as, as a contributor to the work and the project and the overall team. And they're going to show up differently for you. They're going to show up better for you. Right. Because people do more of what they enjoy and people do better at what they enjoy. That's just human nature. So why not take advantage of it? Why not leverage it? So I'm talking to the employee and I'm talking to the employer. It is time to bring some enjoyment to our employment. Here, here, here's another one, just as a personal note. When we learn our working genius, we're not going to only learn ours, but we're going to learn that the other four that maybe are not ours are owned by someone else. And what this does when it comes to team building and teamwork, we begin to not only appreciate ourselves more because we say, hey, this is what I bring to the table. But now we get to appreciate what the other people do. So this is going to bring about a greater awareness and appreciation for ourselves and for the people that we work for. And here's the kicker. This is the bonus right here, baby. This is the bonus, right? There's not going to be as much judgment and confrontation and backbiting and, um, you know, inner inner team conflict, because when you can't do what I do it's no longer going to be, oh, you're not carrying your weight. You're not you're not showing up like I'm showing up. You're going to be able to appreciate that person and say, oh, they're working geniuses, this and that. Because it's, it's, it, it, it gets really good when you learn your genius and then begin to share your your genius with other people on your team. So now we all know what each other's genius is. So now there's more empathy. There's more grace that's extended towards one another because they're flowing in theirs and, and you're flowing in yours. So not only do you work together better, but when someone doesn't show up the way you show up, you can remember, oh, they show up like this. This is their gifting. This is where this is their strong suit. Oh, my goodness. I can talk about this all day long. This is a game changer. This is an absolute game changer for anyone who wants to elevate in those three areas. So, guys, I know I've talked enough. I'm right at about my time. I've been just flowing with this thing. I think I hit all my notes. I think I hit all my notes. Um, that's pretty cool. All right. So let me go ahead and wrap it up. Let me go ahead and wrap it up. Um, I think I kind of made that point. Yeah. In my notes, I just kind of put down, you know, from an HR perspective, there's a huge opportunity that's being missed by not being aware 
of the working genius because I believe that there are some HR departments that, that that they're not even aware of the working genius and then they're not aware of how to incorporate it in the hiring process and how to uh, incorporate it into the manager's you know kind of game plan for the employees um, so there's a huge opportunity that's being missed on just not knowing this stuff right because you can better equip your employees and you can better equip your business teams and your projects teams um, for greater success um, teamwork goes up and appreciation and camaraderie uh, definitely goes up so in closing let me give you the CTA all right Number one, again, this is about taking responsibility. If you are the employee, this is about taking responsibility to bring that enjoyment into your employment. Your corporation, your business, your company, they may never be aware of the working genius. They may never get on board. But that doesn't mean that you can't take responsibility for yourself. You can take the assessment. You can learn what your working genius is, and you can begin to champion for yourself. Hey, this is my giftings. Then you can begin to analyze the work that you've been given, and you can identify where your giftings can be most um, effective. And then you can identify those things that you just got to do anyway, and then you can prioritize them as such. But then you can go to your manager and say, hey, I know something about myself. If you put me in this position or you allow me to try doing that, or if you give me a shot at doing that, I bet you I could do a great job. I bet you I can improve X, Y, and Z. You know, the trouble spots, you know, the gaps, you know, the, the issues that your company or corporation are experiencing. And if your genius contributes to the solution to their problems, just like what I did, I, I, I saw a breakdown of communication, a gap in communication and my, my, my working genius, right? Um, I was able to take those two and merge them with my skill of communication. And I was able to present my, my case and present myself to my management team to say, this is, this is who I am. This is how I get down. This is what I can do for you. And I, and I, and I, and I champion that for myself. And it led, you know, again, from a two year contract to a six figure income um, promotion after promotion, you know, increase after increase. Um, I've had a good run so far, especially from my background. So if that's the kind of results that you want, then it begins by you picking up this book and by you taking the assessment. So really, that's my CTA right there. Operating, operate in your genius as much as you can. It's going to regulate you. You're going to have a better mood. You're going to have a better quality of life, a better quality of work. You're going to be happier. You're going to be more satisfied. You're going to be more content. You're going to be more effective, efficient, and engaged on your job. And if you're looking for a career change, this informs you of the work that you want to go and do. So when you're job hunting and you're filling out your resume, you can you can put some of this information in your resume so they know up front. And these can be speaking points in your interview. This is what I need to do. This is this is where I'm going to shine. This is how I can add the most value. These are things that you can actually say in your interview to not only help you to shine, but to help them shine. You're you're saying to them, hey, look. I'm coming in knowing who I am, knowing what I bring to the table. And if you plug me into these given areas, I'm going to improve operations on your behalf. I'm going to take your engagement, your effectiveness, your efficiency. I'm going to take your work environment to the next level because I'm flowing in these gifts and I'm flowing in this genius. And I've recognized it. Now I just need for you to recognize it. And put me in, coach. <laughs> I'm ready to play. You feel me? Put me in these positions and let me do my thing, right? So the whole interview process, the whole career path, the whole job hunting, that whole space gets, gets revolutionized. Next level stuff, baby. Because you're operating in your genius and you know, you know exactly what it is. So that's the CTA, man. Buy the book, take the assessments, and begin to integrate and begin to incorporate your working genius into your life. All right. Listen, that is it, man. Um, I hope and pray that you guys have received some value. 
in and through everything I've said. I hope and pray that you guys would take this and run to the bank. Run, 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 literally and figuratively. Like, yeah, increase, promotion, all right? Because you know you're genius and you know your worth and you know your value, all right? So that's it, man. I love you guys. I'm praying for you guys. Um, listen, I believe in you guys. Let's continue, guys. Let's continue to regulate right here. Let's continue to innovate right here. Yeah, let's let, let, let's continue to elevate right here. Let's continue to be encouraged. And yes, as always, let's continue. Please continue to be your possible. God bless you.